I know that when somebody come and kick it with me, and I'm not tripping about it because this is, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. But I know that it's a possibility that when people come into my presence, that they're going to pull me to the side and say, hey, fam, mm, it's rough. And I get a whole bunch of fives every single day. Every day. Where's my pants at? I get a whole lot of fives. I get like $100, $150 worth of fives every single day. You know why? Because this person is going to walk down the street and he know my pad. Anton, you know I ain't ate today, right? Every day. You know I ain't ate today, right? And I know he ain't ate. This ain't even no play. Because I, I get familiar with some of the people that I deal with on a regular basis. You know I ain't ate today, bro. All right, listen, we're going to go ahead and make sure he eat. We're going to make sure that they eat. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. How many people can depend on you? Can you even depend on yourself? Can you feed yourself? Are you the big homie or are you going to forever be the little homie? Are you forever going to be the person that got to depend on somebody else and you always pulling? Or at what point do you become the big homie? Because there is never going to be a shortage of people that need you. Poor people don't go away. Famine don't go away. It don't go away. Most of the money that I get, I give it away. I tithe to the streets. And I just reserve myself for that. What it, it's just what it's going to be. How much money did I spend a day? Probably a little short to $4,000. I didn't go shopping. I didn't buy not one thing for myself. I didn't buy one thing for myself. Today alone, I spent the equivalent of probably close, somewhere between $3,500 and $4,000. $3,504,000 in the streets. And that's on everything. That's on my father's grave. That's on my daughter's life. You know why? Because that's just the requirement. You know what I got for it? I went and bought two pillows. I bought two pillows for myself today. That's all I bought. How many times are we just going to depend on everybody else? Or at what point do we gird ourselves up and learn to be who it is that we supposed to be? Because the true blessing, the true blessing is in blessing other people. The true blessing is in blessing other people. At what point are you going to stand up and become the man that you're supposed to be that you would want your daughter to marry? At what point are you going to become the big homie? Huh? Huh? Don't nobody feel sorry for you. Don't nobody feel sorry for me. And you shouldn't. And I get it. And I understand it. I get it. I understand it. And I'm not tripping about it. I'm blessed. And I would never complain. God knows I will never complain about the position that he put me in. Because I am very, very much blessed. But it's a burden that comes with the, with the, with the blessing comes a burden. You curse with a gift. They never put it to you like that. So you never understood it. Sometimes you're cursed with a gift. Because you'll never be able to sleep knowing that you're not using your gift to fix the very things that we need fixed in society. You know, I study some of the greats, right? I study the Malcolm X's, the Martin Luther King's. I read their books and stuff like that. And I've studied their autobiography. I study all of the, the CEOs and stuff like that. And you know what they've all been? Cursed. What a gift. Sometimes people pray for things that they know not of. And they ask God, oh, send me this and send me that. But they've never truly counted the cost. And it's going to take everything from you. It's going to take your freedom. It's going to take your life. It's going to take your sanity. And this is one of the reasons why I ask y'all to hold me up in prayer. I don't ask for much. I don't ask for anything except for y'all to hold me up in prayer and do the thing that's in your own best interest. And you know, when I talked about these women being fiends and for them not to really be queens, do you know what makes my wife truly awesome? Is because... For the entirety of what, you know, us being together. And a lot of people always say, Anton, you always referring to your wife. Well, you should look at that as inspiration because I don't really know how many people is even talking about their family or you've ever seen a wife or you've seen how they interacted. 
And one of the beautiful things about my wife, I got to give her some credit. I got to give Rita some credit is the reason that she's a beneficiary and she's so blessed is because her entire existence has been to help other people. And the, and the person that she spends the most time focused on is my daughter and me because she knows that, okay, Anton has taken his journey and this is who he is. And even though she is, she says it all the time. She says it to me. She says it in person. Sometimes she'll express it to you guys. And she said, listen, I know what his life is supposed to be and what it's going to be like. I've signed up for this. And so she spends the majority of her time pouring into me or making sure that I have everything that I need to go and, set and, and do what I got to do on, on a journey. She spends all of her time repairing me. Sometimes I could be asleep and she waking up at the middle of the night. And she making sure that she praying for me and she rubbing my feet or she trying to figure out how to make my life easier because she knows that I got a whole nother war to fight the next day. I got another war to fight the next day. And the war is not in our household. The war is out in the streets. And so she gird me up and she pray for me and she pray that I get home safely and come back. And the entire time, I know sometimes y'all have seen her even be massaging my feet or she'd be giving me a, a pedicure or she'd be rubbing my feet or whatever while I'm on a live stream. That's because she getting to me when she can. And that's what comes along with being a great woman. She getting to me and she trying to repair me and put me back together in a little bit of time that she got me. Cause she ain't got me for long cause I'm back in the streets. And so when you see her, for example, on a live stream this morning on the millionaire morning show, the first thing that she did is she met, she came down and she went and met the cleaners. And so she went and she took care of all of the stuff that needed to be taken care of around me. And she taking care of business. And then she went and met with the contractors. And then she said, hey, Anton, we got to do this. So I'm going to plan for this in your schedule. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Oh, and can I come up to the studio today? And I'll just sit in the background while you work because I just want to be up under you because I never really get a chance to really, really see you because I got to do this. I got to do this for you. And I got to take care of this for you. And I got to do Man, it's nothing that that woman can't have. That's my peace. That's my peace. It's nothing that she can't have. Give a fuck about no car. Get her the best car that she can have. Whatever she want. She get it. She get the best of it. You know why? Because that's my peace. That's a person that spends her time. She sacrificed her life. Not for what she want, but for what was best for the people. She pour into me so I can pour into you. It's my peace. It's my heart. It's my soul. And she do whatever it takes in order to make sure that I'm happy. Because she know the minimal amount of time that I have to reserve for myself. It all goes back out to the people. And that's the definition of a great woman. 